The techniques presented in this video are only a suggestion. They're not the only way of making something in Nuke. Compositing in a node-based software is very flexible, so there are always several ways of making the same result. If you don't like my techniques and you think they are incorrect, well, they're not. They're just another way of doing the same thing. Hello everyone, my name is Zugera from Hugo's Desk. Episode 3 to my brand new video series called You Just Have To Be Better. Yes, better. You know, when you're not that good, but you just should be better. So every week I will present a tutorial for visual effects in around 5 minutes. Around 5 minutes, you say? Well, I am quite tired of very long tutorials. And it's not like you can't watch the video again. You could watch the video again if you want. Let's get on with it, shall we? You just have to be better using projections for cleanup. Timer starts now. Today we will be using a shot from Leonard in Slow Motion. Leonard in Slow Motion is a short film directed by Peter Lavozzi, which I was the visual effects supervisor and lead artist about two years ago. If you haven't seen the film yet, just go ahead to the Facebook page or to the YouTube page of Vice to check the short film out. It's a really funny film starring Martin Starr. So today we will be using the projection 3D uh, setup in Nuke to actually clean up a person from the shot. In this case, I'm going to clean up Martin Starr from the footage entirely using projection. Now I want to make sure that everyone understands that this is not a 3D tracking tutorial. Uh, for that, you should wait a few more weeks. I am going to make uh, one of these tutorials about 3D tracking only. So the first thing we need to do if we want to do a projection cleanup using the fantastic projection tools of Nuke is, of course, to do a 3D track. Of course, for doing a 3D track, we will need to use a lens distortion. Now, we are not going to go through in detail of how to distort it, but because that will be for another tutorial for another day. But I'm assuming that you know how to use a lens distortion node. So just use it. Now, in the camera tracker, we're going to start by choosing the camera in question. In this case, it was an epic uh, red camera in 2K wide format, and the lens was a 16 millimeter. We're going to start by putting a preview features. Now, because it's a panning shot and it's a quite long shot, we lose a lot of points along the way. So I'm going to put at least 300 features. This, of course, will very much depend on how long the shot is and how many points you lose. I'm going to hit the track button. Once the track is done, I get a solve. And once the solve is done, I can now jump into 3D and just check the accuracy of my 3D track. As you can see, I have a point cloud. The point cloud looks pretty accurate to me. I can see a wall. I can see a door. I can even see a car. So it does look like it's actually working very well. I'm going to, of course, refine my track by tweaking uh, the track by deleting some of the unnecessary points and by lowering the solve error. I'm also going to orientate my track, that's very important, so that my uh, origin point starts on a correct place and the floor is actually on a floor. Uh, also, I'm going to take the opportunity to actually scale the scene as well. I'm going to hit the scene and with that I'm going to be creating a 3D scene uh, with a camera. I'm just going to put a scanline render as well so that we can actually have a full scene. I've also switched off the render on the camera tracker so that it doesn't show up the points because they don't need to be uh, in the actual 2D point cloud. As you can see, I have a pretty sturdy track. Looks like it's going to work just fine. I have now, of course, placed a card. Uh, that card will be placed in the 3D system. Now I'm going to just place the card as best as I can, uh, as near to the wall as possible, because the wall is what I am going to do the cleanup on, and I'm going to do the projection. I'm also not going to forget to put the lens distortion node after the scanline render, so that I can redistort that card back into the scene. Once my card is placed, now I can start the projection system. So I'm going to bring in a frame hold because I'm going to use a still from the footage as my projection setup. Then I'm going to use a project 3D node to actually project a still using the same camera. Now it's important to use the same camera so you have the same angle for the projection. I am going to clone the frame hold so that the camera is exactly locked to the same frame hold that my still is. I'm going to choose a frame that uh, doesn't have Leonard 
Once I find that out, I'm going to put 1970 on my frame hold. Now both the frame is static on 1970, but also the camera doing the projection is also static on frame 1970. As you can see, it is now working. Now I just need to repeat this process several times until I have the entire wall painted by choosing different frames from different parts of the footage so that I can project different times of that wall throughout the whole wall. Just gonna copy paste my entire setup and repeat, repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Of course, the only thing that will change will be which frame I'm actually gonna use. So as you can see, I'm now going a few frames later. Of course, you always have to do the projection in the middle. You wanna make sure you're using the middle section of the footage because that's the one that has less distortion, it has less chromatic aberration, and has less uh, lens artifacts. The sides are always not good. By using some rotoscoping, I can then cut my uh, frame hold uh, sections into my projections so that I can use only sections of them. Of course, this is a very short tutorial, so I'm not gonna do the entire wall, but as you can see now, we would just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the same process. One thing you cannot forget is that as you're using a frame hold, you are literally freezing the grain or the noise that your footage has. So you wanna make sure you denoise your footage before you project it and then regrain the footage back once it goes through the 3D tracker. Now, I usually use neat video to denoise my footage, but if you don't have access to neat video, you could, uh, of course, use the built-in denoiser. It will work just as fine. Of course, neat video is going to give you better results. It's a much better, better algorithm. Once you've done the denoising, then you can be assured that your projection is actually going to be clean without any frozen noise. And then, of course, you can't forget to use a regrain node from Furnace to actually bring back the same noise again or the, the same grain into your piece of footage. And, as, and there you have it. As you can see now, we have made Leonard disappear, of course, minus the shoes. We, of course, would have to do a projection setup for the foot. Uh, and that projection, of course, would have to be a card on the floor, not uh, on the wall so that we would project the bottom. And of course, we would have to rotoscope the grass uh, back into the shot. But there you have it. This would be a very simple setup that you could repeat and repeat. And of course, like I said, this is a very short tutorial. So you would have to repeat this process. And of course, you would have to work better on the rotoscoping and, uh, you know, make the shot um, look better. Uh, it would require more time than the time that you can see here. By all means, I really don't want anyone to think that a cleanup like this can be done in five minutes. That is not the case. And that's why on some moments of this tutorial, I actually um, made the video run faster. And time is up. So next week, yet another, you just have to be better at something. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave me a comment. If you did not like this video, well, you can just leave. You know, there's just, just leave. Thank you so much for watching.